Here, let's do a little bit of our pre-glaze on that just to let it set there and then we can uh, get some of our indigo into this. Mostly indigo here, maybe a bit of black spinel. And then we'll just let this sit on here, let it uh, stain it for a little bit. So yeah, these right here, the, this is one of the nine. This is uh, from Forge World here. And I, it should be interesting to see what they do with these guys in the new uh, Dolgeldor, uh, well, source book, campaign book. I mean, either one. All right, Van Dyke Brown, a little less Fulton. Hit the cloak. Let some of that get on the armor. Don't care. Not a big deal. Yeah, just get some of this down onto the base. And again, the idea is just slap this on here so that we can let it sit there for an extended period and then wipe some of it away. So I'm just taking a little time away here so that I can do this. And this is a very rough absorbent surface here, so using a little bit more of the thinner, not a horrible idea. Here, more of our asphaltum. Again, using one of the, our beat up craft brushes for this. All right, just about there, and then we'll set him aside. Go back to our other style. That's why we like to have multiple figures to work on. We'll darken this down as well. Now that I'm thinking about it, here's some of that black spinel. I'm going to cool this down too. Where's my... There you are. Just like we did on the other one. Ah, yeah, that's... I kind of hadn't really done too much with the floor here. Not that I want to draw tons of attention to that, but now yeah, we're just cooling this down a little bit. Let's maybe get some more glow up against the wall. We're going to darken this down too. Definitely on that side. Okay, that, that works a little better now. And we'll probably do just a bit more of our lighter color. We'll take some of that blue-ish. Let that mix. Oh, here, just a little bit more. Here. Uh, oh, look at this. One of my micro-blending brushes. Do the same over here. Okay. And then, of course, we had uh, hit this through the. Oh, there's my uh, black, a little bit of the indigo. And we'll work back and forth on our. Uh, this is the, the tainted, that's right. That's who this guy is. And that's actually mixing with some of our lighter color that we threw out here. See that? Uh, see that? It's starting to mix in some of our black spinel there. A little bit of the. There's my turquoise. It's like, why is that not doing much? Throw some here. And then we'll just let that set the same way. Let's come back over here. We must have, so we have a few sponges left, not too many. Yeah, indigo, sustaining color, right? We talked about that earlier. And that wasn't left on there very long. And of course, it's doing some 
some nice work with the staining. Uh, so Grim, nothing specific planned for that. It's either, uh, I would like to be able to do a Dark Sword uh, tutorial with it. That's uh, that's my main goal because I've, I've been doing a lot of the, I don't know, what would you say, earth tones and stuff with Dark Sword figures. I want to do something that is brighter. Now, the other thing, too, potentially, is uh, some kind of a Slanishi skin tone. <laughs> because, you know, wham! <laughs> there you go. Oh, my goodness. So that that's something I've been given, uh, given some thought to. And there's a... I think there's a couple that I had in mind that could do well with some magenta, actually. I wanted to say, uh, maybe even on uh, this one right here. Could be interesting to see what that might do. Uh, there's some other ones, some like the Thief of Hearts type figures that are bigger. Uh, I was I was hoping to do something a little bit larger with that so that maybe we could also try the the Radiant Violet with it, too. So yeah, wiping some of that away. So look at how much of the indigo stays behind. Now we also have our our base that we can paint to. Uh, oh, we do have a we have a Grima right here. <laughs> Still can't believe that Aowen broke up with them. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at one of our. Here's our base for Denethor right here so we have to do that same thing on his on his base oh and by the way here's some more of the uh, I think wow that really has it's interesting that was so floppy when it first came out now it's actually pretty darn solid so this is more of those Transylvania skeleton whatevers and again these are from Highland Miniatures so there's that one the broken shield there so you can just you know stick that here there's a, I think I took out, I thought I had another shape. No, nope, I didn't have any of the other shields out here. Let's get our filbert brush wherever he went off to. And let's get some of our radiant turquoise, if there's a spot where we can use it here. And we'll do a little bit of our dry braces. That's got a little bit of the green in it still. Here, I'm going to, I think I might just have to get all that stuff out of there. There's a little too much of the fluorescent green in there. Sometimes we actually do have to just clean the brush more fully rather than just the wiping it off on a paper towel. Which, if I can find a paper towel here, we'll try and wipe that off. There's stuff that looks like paper towels that is actually uh, solid pieces of bone plastic. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit more of a paper towel. Let's take some of this. We'll let some of our indigo mix with that. Now we've got a little bit more of our radiant blue here. Just letting the colors change a little bit here and there. I don't know which of the nine this is supposed to be. Couldn't tell you. Did that one, uh, yeah, Grim, you're right. That one's, uh, that one lets you know it's there. <laughs> it lets you know it's around for sure. Now, what do we want to do with the axe here? I don't know. We'll start with something simple like that, and then we'll work our way from there. So again, so something like that, and then some light over there. So it's uh, just a couple of seconds to establish some form of uh, metallicness. Now let's start to take advantage of this a little bit more here. 
because we're looking to do something more like this. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, let's get some lights along. These, it's interesting. This armor is really some of the most different armor compared to all. Well, of course, there's Kamul. I mean, he is the most distinctive. But this guy here also sort of stood out to me. We'll do some more of our, our lighter blue here. This has got a little bit more of the turquoise in it than, say, the previous couple that there was a lot more of the radiant blue that I used. This is a little more turquoise to it, but there's an awful lot of indigo here already in place. We'll do the same semi texture cloth on his cloak like we've done on the other two and we need to get some light here around it well there's no no face inside of course so that's not quite chain mail it's almost more like a miniature scale mail or something i don't know not quite sure what that's meant to be but here let's get some of our lights along the armor back here then we want to get those little uh, bits of almost like flame here, let's get some of this down onto the the armor on his feet then we can try and hit our base as well Go back to the axe here. That uh, let's uh, lighten up this here. We'll come back into that and do some of our regular blending in a sec. Just find a blending brush for that. So that's some heavy duty chain mail here. Well, let's lighten this up a little more. So again, we're looking to do a, some kind of almost a shiny metal here. Ah, so it uh, looks like it's it's dog walking time for Grim. Well, go have fun uh, chasing dogs and walking the squirrels. So say we all. So say we all. Hi, uh, Clover. How you doing? Thank you so much. Here, we'll take a little sip to go with that sub because, you know, sipping a sub is great. Uh, thanks, Clover. Yeah, so we've been working on a bunch of different figures here tonight. We did a couple of more of the, I almost said Medbury again, but this is the Highland Miniatures. Just painting them up like Army of the Dead because, you know, Army of the Dead, right? And now we're getting back into our Nazgul here. This is actually the our third Nazgul. Because, you know, Nazgul. It is, it's October after all. So let's, let's get the Nazgul, have, let them have some fun too. So I hope that you're doing well there, Clover. And uh, I think what you saw... You saw the landscape from last night, I believe. Speaking of uh, Nazgul and stuff, our new Minas Morgul. So yes, we have we have our new Minas Morgul. Since the old one is uh, is gone, we don't have that one anymore. Of course, uh, we're kind of zoomed in here, so we won't be able to see the whole thing all at once. But that was really fun painting that. Heck, this is the first miniature that's not green because, of course, uh, uh, not like our Blood Angel or any of our Army of the Dead. So, yay. I was like, what is so different about this one? Oh, it's not green. And I'm, I'm not kidding when I say I had no intention of just painting all kinds of uh, 
greenish miniatures all week long. That was not the plan. That just sort of happened. Uh, I think maybe if it was in October and we weren't trying to find as many spooky things as we could, maybe it wouldn't have accidentally happened that way. Okay, we're going to throw that lighter uh, texture onto his cloak too, but right now I just want to at least get a little bit of my lighter metals on here. Uh, especially before doing the cloak, because if I make the cloak too light, well then our lights here aren't going to have uh, quite so much impact, will they? Oh, I like the clover. That was a little bit complicated. It was a bit like the Minas Tirith one, where we had an awful lot of different perspective going on. Uh, lots of vanishing points, to say the least. Lots of vanishing points. And then I've, I kind of learned a little bit about the architecture of Minas Morgul, and there's some very unique matriculations on that. Much larger than you typically see on any sort of a typical fortification. Yeah, so we, gee whiz, we did get kind of a lot of uh, green into this one, didn't we? Ah, it's okay. Boy, this one, I, I knew there was a lot of interesting armor on here, but it's even more interesting than I thought. There's a lot of interesting things going on with this here. And we'll, we'll be coming back in with, again, the little firelight glows and uh, some of our warmer reflected colors. Possibly even some Prussian blue. There's some of that reflected light on the inside of his arm. Hey, Acid Burn. Nice to see you. Now, oh, let's see. Turn your floral pigments. Uh, now, Clover, which... Uh, were you using the Mona Lisa thinner? I guess that is the... Uh, that Or the Mona Lisa linseed oil. I guess that's my first question. Because, actually, yeah, we've been... Uh, well, we've been using it on these guys. And it just dried like regular oil paint. Because, yeah, these are all dry right here. And then, of course, where's our... Uh, this was our fluorescent magenta here, and it just uh, dry like regular oil paint. Uh, so acid burn, how are you doing? Hopefully you're having a fun Friday. I guess, uh, I wonder if Pyro Club is still going. Mm, it's 10.03, they might be done for tonight. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to my uh, my blue over here. Ironically enough, I took a little bit of the ultramarine violet and mixed that in to try and take away some of the turquoise. Now I think we'll lighten this up some more. Now I guess the next question is, how much did you mix in there? And yeah, even the uh, the secret weapon weathering powders, where the heck is she? Even those dry just like uh, normal oil paints here. I'm looking at this going, man, that's just, that just looks like oil paint. Even the, the skin tone, which is mostly just the uh, secret weapon weathering powders and the linseed oil. Now, if uh, if by dulled down, do you mean it got more flat, or it just wasn't very, uh, it just didn't have that fluorescent look anymore? Because, yeah, our, uh, I mean, I painted this thing last night, and it still has all of the same intensity. Ah, doing some soldering, fixing some change, that sounds really good. Uh, soldering that would be uh, that would be a real interesting thing. I never had a chance to do any soldering myself. We're gonna have to again get some reflected light down here on the bottom of the feet. 
basically I have to have that light, dark, and then light again. Let's do that on the inside here of his feet and let's make sure we lighten up some of that chain mail too. Want to get the end of some of these. Again, that's not scale mail. Not really sure what you'd say that is. But now we're going to have to start putting in some horizon line and other things. Uh, what about this hand? Yeah, we never really did get our lighter colors on this arm. Put some here. And then we'll have to come back into that with some of our dorks too. And where's our, here he is. So again, see these little uh, firelight type things? I want to get the same same deal on this other uh, wraith right here. Well, more of a Nazgul, I guess. Let's get some lights on the inside of his arm. We need to do top of his arm here. This is really some wild armor. That is some very different stuff. Uh, the yellow disappeared completely. Uh, yes, and the clover, uh, I guess, how liquid was it? Because, I mean, I don't know. Consistency-wise, it was... When I mixed mine, it was still about the consistency of miniature paint. It was, it wasn't super thick or gloopy. And I guess too, sometimes uh, you have to really stir that up before you use it. That's probably another thing too. I know some folks say, man, it's just like it's all linseed oil. Yeah, you'll have to definitely uh, kind of stir that up. It's uh, definitely more often than you would just uh, regular, you know, the regular stuff that you mix in the containers for sure. Here, we'll lighten that up too. Got to put an edge on this. Never really did do that yet. Get our edge up there. Our light here, and then a bit over there. Just let that get blended a smidge. And now I'm going to come back with. Uh, we got. Do we have any Prussian blue here? I think we have some that we can use. I'm just going to throw some more out here. See if we can find some. That's not our Prussian blue. This is. Don't mean really very, very little. Uh, the other, so it's. Yeah, and, um, like I said, uh, it definitely shouldn't. You shouldn't have any kind of transformation in the. Like where it just it completely disappears, shouldn't have that. I was, uh, I know myself, I was worried that if it was going to just like revert to a powder state almost, and it didn't do that. I was really worried that was going to happen. So here we're taking some almost like a little bit of a sky blue color here. Now, yeah, looking for some variations in this before we get to that cloak. Another little different color here into the uh, axe. It's got that tint of Prussian blue, which is a. And of course, we got a little bit of our uh, little hint of the turquoise as well. We sort of got about four different blue colors working here all at the same time. Which is kind of important when it comes to armor and where you want to have some nice definition in that. OK, 
Okay, the shoes, we need to restore some separation between these panels, no matter what. And now I'm going to take a look. Where's Denethor? I'm going to look at his base here and see how... Okay, we're going to add our grayish white here. Onto this uh, marble here. That's got to go at each. Uh, going to go in different directions, so that these all look like individual uh, marble pieces here. This is our somewhat darker marble color, and then we'll put the really light stuff on over the top of this again. It's going in different directions. Is there, yeah, we'll do the same over here. Now we'll lighten this up a bit more. I don't want to do it too much, but this is what we're looking to do, like our, our Denethor base here. Let's catch a little bit more of our white into that brush if the texture on this becomes too pronounced i can always take my blending brush and go over it again these uh have the marble veins going in different directions not all the same I'm trying to think of uh, what might be happening there. Again, I've never seen that happen. Uh, not anything the stuff that I've done. And I guess, too, is how thoroughly has it been mixed. And that's, that's why I always just uh, mix them in the containers here so I can see what's going on 100% of the time. So I'll get different directions on the, uh, basically the veins of the marble here. We got one last one to do here that's a, a bit lighter. Maybe we'll get a couple of these lines get slightly lighter, but that's just a couple of them. That's it. Not too many. See, that's it. Just one or two there on that little piece of marble. Same there. Don't need that piece of fuzz on the end of the brush. Ah, here we are. Ah, that's better. And we'll get our lighter brush strokes on the marble here. And then I think it's just indigo for the most part. Yeah, mostly indigo in the uh, these big tiles right here. Yeah, Clover. Now, were those the, the uh, were those the only ones that you tried? Were the was it the yellow and the orange? All right, time for some of those little uh, touches of the firelight here. Let's see if we can make this happen. I need to make that actually a little bit thinner here. And we'll just bring in a couple of those every so often here. Maybe on the side of the helmet. We're going to have to get some darks around that, no doubt about it. But I know I've got to come back with those darks, so I'm not worried about that. Might even let a couple of the bits of chain mail get some. Uh, 
Again, not too many. And perhaps even here, uh, that's a good place to embed these where we already know there's some dark. There's going to be some dark over here too. So get just that little hint and indication of some kind of torchlight, whatever, coming from somewhere. Definitely need some of it on the side of his head. Uh, some of these panels that are pointing upwards, I don't think those should really get any of it. It's got to either be pointed kind of straight out or maybe towards the ground, but that's it. And maybe that one there. Okay, now let's uh, come back with some indigo, I think. I don't know, a little bit of Prussian blue too. Because we really need to capture some darks in his helmet. Start to think about building up a bit of a horizon line here. As we darken that down a little more maybe. Might even go more of a pin line. Yeah, let's do a little bit of a pin line wash there. So we're just touching the brush to it. All I did was I just took some thinner there was already indigo on the brush. And I just let it do its own thing. Let's uh, strengthen these lines here. That's essentially a pin line wash in there. Uh, let's see, red, orange, jelly, yeah, that's about the same, that there's only a little yellow on the figure. Now, of course, the yellow by itself is not necessarily going to be just super strong on its own. And I guess, too, it, uh, how was it applied? I know that's a weird question in, in some ways, but you know, was it dry brushed on? Was it painted on? Was it more of a, because now I've used them. You know, I've dry brushed them on. I've also, like with the painting that I was doing last night, this was practically a watercolor application of it. Now, it was mixed with other colors, too, because typically uh, the fluorescent paints, I'm not just using them on their own. They're always uh, almost always being mixed with something else. So I don't know if you know, that could have something to do with it, too. They're rarely just operating on their own. The so yeah, vast majority of the time, they are mixed with something else. So we're getting the indigo now onto uh, these two big tiles right here. Finish you up there. And now let's see what we can do. Van Dyke Brown. Some of our black, and let's start to uh, texturize the cloak just a bit. And then we'll come back with our lighter colors. Uh, let's end, uh, let's see, a pre glaze of an umber. Okay. Um, So, yep, yeah, maybe also you know, try, I guess, uh, your same paints again before you mess with the mix or something like that. Maybe mix them with some other colors, not not a bunch, you know, maybe almost 90% or whatever of your fluorescent, and then maybe something else, a little bit of brilliant yellow paint or a little bit of something lighter or something darker, just to see what happens. So there's that that lighter texture we were talking about. And it's just it's mixing again with the dark that we put in here. And it happens nice and quick. Let's 
but it was really picking up some of the darker color too. So yeah, now we have our little bit, you know, we can see that marble on our base here. That makes him stand out a little bit more. Man, it was super easy to do that base. It was extremely easy. What was it? It was just the green stuff world texture roller on some bulletin board cork, and then we used some of the Luke's APS ground cover. And that was it. Here, let's see if we can do a smidge of some dry brush here of some of our lighter stone color. Not much. Actually gonna fade some of that a little. So yeah, yeah, just uh, well, like uh, as a control for the experiment, right? So it, so you can just say, okay, well, when we just dry brushed it out, this is what happened. When we mixed it with another color, well, this is what happened. And that is some of our that Prussian blue mix. Uh, some of this I'm looking to maybe tone some parts of the lighter color down, also soften some edges here and there. So yeah, that's gonna need, I think some more of our, some more of our lighter light color, I think along that part of the surface. Darken this down. Good enough. Uh, back to some of my much darker tone here. Uh, get to work around where we want our firelight to be. Then we'll have to hit those with some of our brightest yellow. Looking to do some horizon line there and again up here, which tells me we just, yeah, we have to come back in with our lighter color and that'll just have to be, that's what we need up here is our lightest light color. And also here I need to get some, oh wow, I actually need to do some dark over here too. I think we've lost, yeah, so we definitely lost some of that. And that right away sharpens up that edge. Need to figure out what is happening here on this. I'm just going to hit it with some Terra Rosa, actually. Just to vary it from all of the blues and grays. That's still mixing with that pre-glaze, which is also got a lot of indigo in it, for sure. I'll take some of my white here. Do a little more dry brushing. And it, well, it's mixing all the while we do that. So a little bit of that onto his cloak too. Uh, it's also knocking down a little bit of the texture of the, well, our cloth. Well, the texture we put in there, just uh, taking that down a smidge. There's a lot going on with all the Arbor stuff there. We don't need to add more to it. Back to our, back to our white over here. Yeah, let's get the top of this. Yeah, let's do a couple of more of these here because there's these crazy little 
almost like a hole. A couple of holes there in the hill. I don't know what that's all about. Looks like he's got eyes in the back of his head. So I think now that we've really popped in some of our Durkis Durks, I can just along here. See, we like to have uh, that chain of highlights here. We're always talking about that, not just evenly spread out. If this was evenly spread out all along this whole thing. It would, wouldn't really have much roundness to it. I think here's another place where we kind of need that a little bit of extra light here. Of course, again, being Forge World, you're going to get some mischief with mold lines and casting and shapes and that sort of stuff. It just, uh, it's the nature of the beast when it comes to, well, any kind of resin figure, but yeah, especially Forge World. Now, before I forget, I want to dive into those. Uh, Lighter yellows so if we say can. We all. So say we all. all right. Oh, thanks, Landrast. Here you go. Oh, look at that. Nine total. That's a. That's a. That's some uh, progeny there. That's a. That's a young one there. That's enough to have an entire person. So thank you very much, Landrast. That is appreciated. Yeah, we were doing some more. We I couldn't find that one piece that I know I printed for the Witch King, so we we painted a couple of more of these guys here. And now we're doing another one of the nine. This is one of the Forge World guys. Pop you right there. Oh yeah, Landris, I I downloaded those Chaos Dwarves yesterday. So it should be interesting. I'll just print, you know, the infantry guys. I'm not, I don't even know if I'm ever even going to try and print up those war machine things. But it should be really interesting, right, to see some tall hats. So thank you so much, Lead Dressed. I, I'm trying to think the last time I painted a tall hat. That was a long time ago. And I think they were all for, yeah, they were all Blood Bowl, too. So it's going to be really cool getting a chance to paint some tall hats. I think I might just have to make a build plate of some of those. Oh, wow, so Grim got more stuff in the mail. Wow, Grim, you're getting all kinds of toys today. Lots of fun stuff. So Landris, I'll I'll see how many pieces that's in. Uh, actually, what I I want to print up the, I think it is. It's called the Last Stand, right? Yeah, I want to get that thing printed up for sure. Because that would be a fun diorama there, and have a painted backdrop behind it too. Here, let's get that going this way. And a couple of more of our little red ish orangey hats uh, in a couple of places there. And again, where's our other there he is. Yeah, we're starting to see ah yeah, we're starting to see that now. Uh, let's see. Uh, so green skins wanted about rogue hairs on a brush. I, I guess it it says, sort of depends what brush it is. Now, since I'm just using craft brushes, I sometimes I'll just let them get more and more beat up and then just replace them with a new one. Uh, with these guys here, now of course the oil paints. The nice thing about the oils is that they, in some ways, rejuvenate your brushes and sort of uh, deal with stray hairs in a way. But what the brushes I'm using are more like three, four hours. That's pretty much what these guys are. I'll sometimes just wet down the brush and 
just slice that that hair off of it. Let's slice it off. I know a lot of people are horrified at the idea of that that you would do something like that, but that's something that I've done more than once. Let's see. So Ragnar has some more Auric Brutes and a Mega Boss. Oh, and a Maw Crusher coming in the mail soon. Oh, I'm sure he eagerly anticipating that. It kind of depends on what it uh, what it does on the build plate. Uh, if it ends up being like a four-hour print versus one of those six-hour, seven-hour ones, generally going to save those for overnight hours. And try and keep the four or ones that, that basically I'm trying to do three shifts a day. So that I can at least have during the day two, four hour, three to four hour, five, maybe five hour max prints. And then those really long ones overnight. Uh, I want to try and get some Loot Studios bits printed out. For sure. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Maybe I never did print those parts. I just am absolutely sure that I printed those up. And I know what's going to happen is uh, you know, next month or something like that, I'll find all that stuff that I was desperately looking for today. But, oh, yeah, here's the... Uh, there's some of the parts anyways of the big giant literally big giant he's the undead giant here i think he goes this way or does he go yeah i think he goes this way yep there we go so there's our big old undead giant that's going to be uh, interesting trying to squeeze him on camera for sure he's a he's a big one I'm going to try and get some more of my reddish orange here. We got an awful lot of the light stuff. Where's my Indian yellow down here? Let's work some of that into it here. And make that just a bit more orange, a little less of the dark red. Let's see what happens with this. Yeah, somewhere in between the really bright orange and that red. There's a little too much of the bright stuff here. We'll tone some of that down, I think. I get the, the things that are facing up, though, I really can't do that. And those, these are the kind of areas that I'm looking to focus that lighter orange stuff on is these uh, stuff that's really facing more towards the horizon line. Think of this like what I did with the Dunn Landings and the basically what looked like burning buildings and the reflections on their helmets, especially along the horizon line. That I probably could stand to get some darks in it too. So let's come back to our darks here. The Indigo. Okay, so that's what happened too. That's supposed to be a whole separate piece here. Now that makes a little more sense. Let's darken this down. Yeah, that's got an awful lot of thinner in it. It's almost like a pin line wash there. So be careful as I apply that. Try and make a bit of a horizon line there. I'll have to get some of our firelight in there. I know I did it on the other one in between some of the, the fingers. That really 
is an unusual armor shape for the helmet. I'm looking at this. Uh, see, there's some reflective light I need back there. I'm going to take this warmer gray. Ah, uh, there. Any over here? Yeah, let's put some reflections over there. We don't really have a whole bunch. We could use a little more light on the chain mail as it works its way down here. I'm going to take some of the indigo and then some of the radiant blue. We don't want to lighten this up too much, but I also want a couple of veins of the marble on that too. So this is pretty dark, but I don't want to make that too light. Otherwise, it's not really going to stand out from his shoe here. It's not going to stand out from the other bits of marble. So some light. We need to, I think, maybe uh, put some more dark with our indigo right along the top edge. There we go. Yep. Now I'll take this. Maybe it's a little bit more of our white. I mean, not that much. And we need to get some reflections right over here on this part of his shoes. <laughs> The armor on his feet, in any case. Maybe now, let's see what happens with some of our lightest light on the shoes. Right along that top edge here. I think you can see that. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what's kind of missing. Uh, that really puts the rest of this in perspective. Here, also, uh, touch more of light there and we'll do that on this side I think what about here right on the leading edge of this stuff uh, that's got a little too much confusion there let's take this we'll just use this as a micro Blending brush. Ah, yeah. That, all it took was just a couple little brush strokes just to refine that. Always looking to refine things. We start out with just blocking everything in. It's just like a regular 2D painting. Then we start to add more refinement where possible. Uh, sometimes, you know, the nature of the sculpt makes it a little bit more difficult to add that refinement, but, you know, let's see, we can do uh, some of our firelight stuff. First, I'm going to maybe do the, some asphaltum here to get a couple of darks to separate each of those planes. Now, I'm going to try and let's see where the Flame thing is here. I'm gonna see if I have some of those kind of march down the side of the helmet here. I don't know how possible this is. We'll find out. Start with this kind of reddish orange here. Let's see if that works. And that I might go a little bit lighter from there. So that's got our yellowish orange. This is also pretty thick. I don't know. That might be too thick. No, actually it did. It had to be. That's Now it actually sticks. Had I gone thinner than that, probably would not have stuck. Uh, yeah, oh, right there. I don't know if you saw. We did paint this. I was on a podcast. Or no, uh, with, on a well, basically a podcast, and this is speaking of uh, Highland Miniatures, when the winged Tassars arrived, right? Yeah, sing the song. There's there's the winged Tassars. And that's how I knew that I had to shrink these things down because 
I think, yeah, I shrank the, it was down about 10% it was. Yeah, around 10% there. So there's the wing to SARS for you. We did actually paint the wing to SARS. Well, we painted one of them. I think I've got four of them overall printed out. I've got the banner bear and then uh, sort of like a captain type. And then I also have the uh, another guy with a sword. Or no, I got with a, with a lance. That's right, with a lance. All right, I'm going to try and get a little bit of the firelight here and maybe something there along the edge of the play we'll take our blending brush mix that in a little uh, so grim wants a banner bear i guess uh well i guess it's different from banner beer uh, I, i'm sure there's a beer that's called banner that would probably be really easy to get your hands on At least I think so. Now that's a little confusing there since we've got also that chip right there. I don't know. Let's see if that works. Can we make this work for us here? And now it's a matter of perhaps even adding a little bit of dark onto this side of where the flame is there. Back to some reflected light here. That's our turquoise again. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> since I ran out of the, well, at least on the palette anyway, our radiant blue, uh, I took a little bit of the cobalt no, so the ultramarine violet and mix that with the radiant turquoise and it sort of turned it into a radiant blue, which was hilarious. Yeah, uh, yeah, Krim, you were, uh, I think you were off doing the dog stuff when, when that happened. Is that going to be lighted up? Maybe. I will throw some of this on the other bits of chain mail right here. Not too much. Here, let's get back to our straight up white in a couple of spots. Hey, Tukali, nice to see you. Hope you had yourself a good Friday. Oh yeah, we I think we could still go definitely much lighter on some of these. So we've this is a uh, actually the well technically the fifth miniature that we've been working on here. We're just doing some pre-glazing on some others, but yeah, we did a couple more of the Highland miniatures as our Army of the Dead, and I it is very clever how you have the same pose but two different weapons, and then there's three different shields you can tack on there. You got your broken shield here. You got the lozenge and then you have a smaller circular one all right that's better now nah, i'm not going to go any lighter and that that's really more of a shadow area here we could use some of our oh yeah I think here we could try if we can sneak in some of that lighter metal color there. Not sure if I can. And uh, yeah, Tukali, I think you saw the end of the landscape last night, didn't you? Another one of our landscapes of Middle Earth. Having some fun with Minas Morgul again. So now the Witch King has a place to hang out once more. 
course, I guess the Witch King had lots of hangout places. I mean, you know, Angmar, of course. I'm going to see if I can't throw a little bit more light again on the ends of the armor. But, oh yeah, here's an old another piece. I got nothing there. That really needs to be lighter. Uh, same here. But you notice we're not just doing edge highlights on this. We're trying to make as many like little shapes in here as we can. Otherwise, it just won't look like armor. It'll just look like, well, cardboard or something. Oh, yeah, that's what we could use right over here. Maybe we'll take the... Uh, our radiant turquoise and follow it right along that edge there. That works. So if tomorrow we'll, uh, it's good. we're going to go back to something really big. It's been a while since we painted something just really colossal. And I figured what, what better than a Saturday session for that? So yeah, that's going to be that giant figure, quite literally a giant from our imprintable, our imprintable terrain. Now I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with him yet. I think he's got armor. There's some bones on there. There's some skin. So. It should give us a chance to do some interesting undead stuff and then some more weathery things. Let's not forget our chain of highlights. It follows all the way up to the helmet here. Hey, Orchrist. So Orchrist... Uh, have you still been doing some more uh, some more of the Dremel type stuff that you were doing? I know for a while you were doing a lot of Dremel work with the plaster. I'm guessing that's probably over with and now it's it's sort of moved on to the painting phase. Ah, so you got the bricks. Yeah, that, that sounded really nifty, what you were doing there with the Dremel and everything. All right, back to the, where's that Prussian, uh, more of the straight up Prussian blue here. And then we'll let it mix with some of our radiant blue. And yeah, I've got to kill off that little bit of fiery stuff that I tried to add in there because it's not facing the right direction for it. Just trying to add a little more of the bluish armor where possible. So we just did a bunch of dark there, but like on the other side, I've got to... Ah, uh, that might just do it. I don't know, do I... Double down on that a little more. Yep, I'll just go that way with it. Ah, so lots of bricks from Orchrist. Yeah, I still want to take the prototypical uh, bag of rocks and then cut out a whole bunch of the little foam stones and then just bash them around in the bag of rocks I just i just want to see what happens i've never had a chance to do that yet and then essentially construct a little tower out of it like well like legos <laughs> it would be like foam legos for adults actually i think kids legos should be made out of foam because when you step on them then it won't virtually kill you you'll destroy their structure but uh you know they can always build another one. It's kind of hard to replace your foot. So yes, uh, foam Legos, that is my proposition. 
uh, self-crushing Legos. Legos that are safe to step on. Safety Legos. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now, of course, they don't exactly snap together, but, uh, you know, kids and hot glue guns definitely go together. Ah, that that's cool. Oh, yeah. Put him in, boil him, mash him, put him in a dice bag. Which reminds me to tell everybody to please check out Armored Wolf's Etsy page. Look at all the, speaking of dice bags, fantastic dice bags you're going to see there. You want to see pictures of them, head over to Armored Wolf's Instagram. And marvel at the amazing works of art, not just dice bags. Can't pop in a little bit more of that texture here. So we're doing the texture cloak because that's, that's what all the cool kids do today. Well, it's also that cloak is a little bit boring as far as its shape goes. So maybe a little texture makes it a little more interesting. Uh, let's see, glue guns. Ah, uh, glue guns make kids go to get. Well, they will. The family that glue guns together stays together. That's for sure. Especially depending on how uh, how much the kids are running around with the glue gun. Actually, a cordless glue gun. Oh, that would be very fun. That would be amazing. The kind of mischief and hijinks you could get up to with a cordless glue gun. I wonder if there, I'm sure there is one, there has to be. Gonna throw some of my dark under there, just reinforce that. It's a little too much light in some areas here. Yeah, was that? Oh, I was looking at a cordless chainsaw, a cordless mini chainsaw, which is something that actually could be very helpful here. Ah, uh, well, that doesn't surprise me. Ryobi and cordless tools. I know I had uh, at least two different Ryobi uh, cord uh, power tools back in the day. Let's see what happens with the arm here. Let's do a little bit more of our dark on some of these panels. We got lots of the, we have light and mid-tone, but not much in between. Let's see what happens with this. That's a little bit of the, uh, well, almost like a cyan here. A radiant turquoise. Uh, let's see, Lego is infused with metal, so you can use an electromagnet wand to pick them up. So, magnetic Legos. Would those be mag Legos? I, I don't know, that sounds like it would be very fun. Back to the Prussian blue. A little bit of our this, uh, turquoise color here. There's a little bit too much of the way. That was a big old panel of really bright highlight there. I'm going to take some of that away. It also makes that little fiery light thing stand out a bit more, too. That can't hurt. I might even hit the edge of the. Well, it's not chain mail, more of like a scale mail fringe here. Yeah, that's okay. That helps. I think I need to get some of my lighter coat right here. If I can squeeze it in here. Ah, uh, just a touch here, here, and one there. 
So now it makes a nice line of highlights down the chest there. Might do the same or something similar over here on this side. Right there. I don't know. A, I'm going to go back to something that's a little bit lighter. And it's right here, trying to squeeze it in between those two. Ah, that's it. That's what I've been what, trying to do, actually, a couple of times. I might even, I'm going to give it another go with that over here. I think you can see what we're trying to do here. One right here and another one there. And there, okay, that is, uh, that's more like what I wanted to see. Now this certainly needs, I think, some help with our lighter. Yeah, that's our lighter blue color there. Never did get my little firelight colors on the back of his hand. Let's give that a shot, see if it works. Uh, let's see. She's, oh, we'll see what the kids are doing with Lego motors and programming kits. Uh, I'm sure they're probably building some kind of ballistic missiles or something. Uh, not, not that we would have done that as a kid. We, uh, we would not have tried to build a Lego Tomahawk cruise missile or anything of the sort with a range of at least three, four hundred miles. Not that we would ever done that in Boy Scouts at all. Certainly not. Not that we would have enjoyed something like that. Um, I might have to... I don't know. I've, I've got to darken down some of the red around that and then maybe hit it with a really light... Yeah, that might have been just too much here with, I don't know, let's see if we can leave both of those in there. Might have to get rid of one of those. We also have to, uh, uh, let's see if we can do this here. Uh, well, Indian yellow into this. It's just getting too uh, pinkish almost. And that's right here where we've got that red. Mm, that's too much. I'm going to go back to my Indian yellow here. And tone that down slightly. It's like I have to highlight a highlight. And it looks... Yeah, we're just able... Okay. That works. Because, again, what we're trying to do is now mimic what we've done on some of our other rates here. Or at Nazgul, I should say. Here, let's say hit this side. I think I can do uh, these right along the edge of his chest armor there. Yeah, something simple. These, that's way too much. Uh, orange right there so let's come back to some of our red we kind of went directly to yellow there nowhere in between so we're going to take down some of the some of the yellow let's go to our finch and red here i'll put a little bit of that on his helmet uh, some of that over here on the axe. Again, doing a little bit of a stippling type of brush stroke there. Because the red that's there is a little bit on the weak side. I want to that stand out a bit more. Let's see, so right there, uh, mentors a high school robotics team that builds robots from scratch and compete in competitions. Let's 
So yeah, I mean, uh, grading those, their homemade weaponry on, well, of course, range, uh, radius of effect, of course. So it, just because it has a 20 mile range, if it only has a three foot range of uh, influence, I think points should definitely be awarded for the effect, the effectiveness of the blast radius. Hey, Loim, how you doing? Uh, so, Loim, I don't know if you had a chance to, uh, or no, you were you were here when we were painting this, right, on Thursday? Here, let me uh, back out for you a few steps. There we go. I think you got the chance to see Arminus Morgo, right? Uh, I, actually, I, I saw two lore, well, had two lore videos playing in the background. I was setting stuff up earlier in the day. And it was uh, regarding the, the Siege of Minas Tirith and the, the Kandish forces. They kind of came in at the very end when uh, Gondor and Rohan, they thought they pretty much had won and were, they were done. They were, they were good. All of a sudden, the Kandish guys came along. And uh, apparently the orcs just created too many holes in the Ramus Ikor. They like they bashed in gratuitous holes in the wall. I thought, uh, yeah, I thought you saw a part of it there, Loim. Now we've uh, been doing some more of the Highland miniatures. They're well, essentially their version of Army of the Dead. I think this is, yeah, this is the other one we've done today here. And uh, Highland Miniatures, uh, they're the same folks that did the Winged Hussars. Painted this one actually on a podcast. Uh, so hopefully your, set, uh, your Friday went reasonably well. I know that you had some, you were trying to help out some, do it, lend a helping hand this week so far. So I've got my reds in there. Let me see if I can f get to those lighter kind of orangey colors here. That brilliant yellow pale will mix it with the Indian yellow, of course. Let's see if we can get some lights right on the edge of Again, highlighting a highlight essentially is what we're trying to do here. It's it's tricky. No doubt about that. And yet, uh, well, after the stream tonight, got to get that huge figure put together. I mean won't be all that difficult because it is it's 3D printed so the pieces will fit together nice and easy. So actually I'm just hitting the uh, yeah let's get some of the uh, red there again on the knuckles for whatever reason just kind of like it there. Worked well on the other one. Might also lighten up the you know, right along the edge of that. Now let's compare that to. Let's just see. Yeah, so we've got uh, this is going to be quite the interesting merry band of Nazgul there, for sure. Uh, I, I might just, for fun sake here, see if I can put something on the feeder. Actually, there's a little bit of the red already there. We'll hit that a bit more. I think you can see this here. Just a couple. And this, I just need to try and smooth some of this out, I think. 
Yeah, it was just, there's a lot of, just like here. Uh, brush stroke management is what we call it at this point. Somebody look around, you see too much of a brush stroke in an area. Uh, that has no real value as far as providing some texture you just to take it and you can either wipe it out completely or just tone it down a little bit I'm gonna see if I can't still enhance that horizon line this one here I did I wish that was just more of a continuous shape there instead of the way they Put those crazy extra holes, it's like he's got eyes in the back of his head. Uh, just trying to find a place to work with this. And let's see if I can get right along the edge here of this, where I was just working, putting in some of the dark. Now I'm going to see if I can get something a little bit lighter here, right along the edge of this. Here. A very thin little bit of light there, and then here too. Ah, uh, okay. I think now that starts to show what's happening here a little better. Uh, sometimes there's a little back and forth. You look at that. I don't necessarily like what's happening right there. I have to make a little bit of a change. Hey, Arda Michael, how you doing? So, yeah, we're continuing our spooky theme here with the more of the Highland Miniatures dudes there and, you know, some more of our wraiths here. Or Nazgul, I guess. So, I'm, as I paint these guys now, I'm really uh, anxious to see when that, when the Dogal Door book is coming out. Now, uh, Loim, I don't know if you've seen, have you seen any more info on the the Amazon show at all? That I don't think there's been any major news. I mean, the last thing was just like when it's coming out, and that's about it. I uh, None of the lore video guys that I watch have had anything more about it. Uh, just hoping that they don't, they don't just uh, pooch it, man. That would be really bad. So, Arda Michael, hopefully your printing has been going well. And well, I guess, uh, are you printing anything different since the last time you were in here? I've got an awful lot of build plates to make uh, once I'm done here. So, yeah, we'll have to head on down to the printing area and start making some more of those. There's that edge of that armor piece. Uh, I would like maybe here to get one little bright highlight there on his that one piece of his chest armor let's see if that works now let's go with some more of these light highlights here so yeah the the last I heard new stuff from that was a couple of weeks ago but yeah all of the lore video guys they've been pretty quiet on the new series front so I guess there's just really not much in the way of news out there. Uh, let's see, print them with some strange looking resins, like <laughs> some Soraya leftovers mixed into a goo. It's uh, it's the uh, it's the homebrew resin. It's like what is it? Uh, it's moonshine resin. There you go.
So is it uh, it's so it's that phase? Uh, well, you're not looking at snow, are you? All right, this needs a bit of dark here. So in the form, I think some uh, indigo, like right here. You know, I'm just gonna kill that one fiery thing. I'm gonna kill all this stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of all of it, and we're just gonna reorganize here. We will reorganize. We got some of our bluish color there. Let's just do this again and simplify. We had too much going on in one space there. Ah, uh, so it looks ugly, but seems to print fine. It's a. Uh, it's not just how it looks, right? It's how it prints. Add some of our Indian yellow mixed with the a little touch of the Fanchon red there. Yeah, okay, that see that starts to work with our little chain of highlights. Right there, a chain of pearls. Those things were too offset. They didn't really work with the rest of what was going on with his arm. That works now. Okay, I just I needed to make that little change. Let's see if I can't. Lighten these up a smidge without, again, letting them be too too close to being pink and not orange. Oh, and these are some crazy uh, helmets these guys have. Like I said before, uh, our Kamul the Easterling, that's going to be, that'll be one of our Patreon videos. Uh, Eldridge Tower, how you doing? Nice to see you back. Hopefully you've had yourself a good day. And uh, maybe setting up for some fun things over the weekend as well. Yeah, <clears throat> this is the first not green thing. So we have we painted, what, four of these guys on Tuesday. We painted two more of these today. We did, of course, our landscape of Middle Earth here. A little bit of Minas Morgul. And then, of course, we here's our most recent patreon video it's all green it's dark angels what what's with the green this week it was not supposed to happen that way or work out that way but it just sort of did it just kind of worked out that way all right here's more of that brilliant yellow pale minus the fuzz on the end of the brush there Yeah, I don't want to do too much of this, but I would like that to have some intensity. Uh, maybe not too much on the chain mail here. Oh, well, uh, <clears throat> actually, Arda, Michael, we don't really get fall colors here, sadly. Yeah, you basically just go directly to brown, and that lasts for about five minutes before all the wind and rain knocks all the leaves off the trees. So, yeah, right now we mostly have just piles of brown leaves. And there'll be more, and they'll just be rotting, basically, in the, uh, in the sewer grates, pretty much. Now uh, that that that's pretty much the your height of the fall foliage season right here is a bunch of dead brown leaves all rotting because they've been rained on for a week or something like that on and off. Yeah, the the fall panoply here is uh really not uh, much of a panoply. <laughs> it's it's more just a blah. We used to sometimes get fall colors and stuff, but uh, yeah, those those leaves don't last too long around here. Which is why we have to import leaves from other areas like Alaska. Now, seriously, Armored Wolf has been sending me leaves for years because they get fantastic foliage up there. It actually sticks around for more than five seconds. Here, not so much. That's gonna, that's all, it's gone as soon as it appears. Uh, 
And then, of course, when you have weird weather like we did this summer, I mean, you actually have trees here where one part of the tree has these bright red leaves on it, and the rest of it is green, and then other parts of it are just brown. <laughs> it's like, what is going on here with these trees? Yeah, let's uh, fade out that highlight just a smidge there, and these guys, we're going to also take the edges we can like clearly count every single brush stroke there we don't want that and uh, again we'll take down some of the uh, uh little smidge of the red there let's see if we can do that reddish orange here on the chain mail if it ends up looking too dark i might just have to do some pin line washes of indigo around it just to make sure there's an adequate amount of dark to show that so you get just a little hint of it there uh, so sweet gum trees have some decent looking leaves actually well my uh, I wish we had a ginkgo tree on the block here because those are always some nice yellow leaves and you know a tree that's been around since the time of the dinosaur well, it's been doing something right if it's still around and managed to survive all the craziness of the last several million years. Uh, well, we have leaves here. We have no shortage of leaves here. It's just there's no color on them, and they're all just rotting in the uh, in the in the gutters. <laughs> well, there's there's no shortage of leaves right here. There's plenty of them. They're just uh, not going to be that any kind of real color on them. That's all. Let's be dark and this down. Now I got to come back in with my. Okay, well, let's uh, start out with this. We've got plenty of dark there. We have no light. That's a nice little start. Let's see if we can get some of our. Ah, here it is. right in there get okay, that there we go that's what i needed to do let's see if we can lighten up this stuff that is just a big old blob right there i'm going to come back to my prussian blue here see if we can tone some of that down i just had to soften that up a little bit Ah, Grumdy, there you are. How the heck are you doing? This is another one of the uh, another one of the Nazgul here, from the from the Dolgul door set. We're getting ready to have the uh, our Kamul the Easterling getting painted up. And of course, well. I forgot to post our Dark Angel here, but we'll get him posted after the stream tonight. Uh, that was again, that was a really fun one to do, I have to say. And now we've got some we have some other interesting figures I think that have arrived that should be good for at least some uh, fun tutorial, if not actually army painting series. Uh, well, Grim, you'll have to you'll have to send me pictures of that because I've all I've ever seen is the couple of cactus house plants here that I've desperately tried to kill because the cat would just want to rub up against that cactus and then deposit cactus quills all over the house that I only found with bare feet. So we really uh, we declared cactus cacti the enemy of the state here at least enemy of the feet when that meant they had to be taken down at all cost well, i'm glad that uh glad that you've been doing good there grumdy i don't know if you saw we've been showing little hints of the the big old uh, three printed figure that I'll be doing tomorrow 
that's going to be really interesting. I don't think... Hmm, I think he's going to be a little bit shorter than Jeeves and Worcester. Maybe maybe a three-quarters of an inch or an inch or so shorter than Jeeves and Birdie. Of course, there's a lot of folks that are like, who the heck are those guys? Well, you'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, that uh, that cat helped to destroy sixty dollars with a printer paper. Do all oh, almost destroy about five hundred dollars with a painted commission miniatures. That cat used up nine lives several times all at once. That cat pretty much used up about ninety lives. But vengeance was achieved, rest assured. Because when we played Chase in the basement, I always made sure that those uh, towers of cardboard boxes that he wanted to run up on, made sure that those had a certain level of instability. They wouldn't necessarily fall over right away. Might have taken three or four attempts to jump up on top of them to make them uh, collapse in a more appropriate way. Yeah, let's get. Oh, uh, we haven't really done these little light highlights on the side of his shoes right there. I might even now that see how that's set. I can actually do more with my. I never even got to this one here. I think. Oh, I think we might have actually had a raid while I was doing that. Let's get this one here. That's uh, right in front of him. Nah, there's nothing like building some unstable box towers for Kitty to climb around on. Endless joy for the human involved. Oh, actually, Loim, uh, speaking of kitties, <laughs> how, how has the new... Uh, I don't know if you want to call it a rescue there. How is how has that been going? I don't think I've actually seen a, a Facebook picture in a day or two of the of the new one there. So I'm just curious what's happening to that. Ugh. Again, this is Forge World, so you know there is Forge Worldness about some of these parts here that are a little uh, wonky. Uh, let's uh, there we go. Where's my Denethor? Yeah, that there we go. Okay, we've got that reasonably in line. I'll get a couple of these bits of the chainmail lighter right here. Once again, I mean, the armor is super different, but do we have, in general, the same sort of effect? I think we do. I might try to darken down a couple of areas here over the top. Uh, pet rent here is too expensive. She's doing well. Suddenly, oh, that's good. Uh, that's good, Loim. Because I know that... Uh, <laughs> There was a bit of feistiness. There was a wee bit of feistiness with that one. I'm guessing that the head is not quite so gigantic in proportion to the rest of the body. Uh, that transition, I guess, usually doesn't take too long, does it? When they go from the tiny kitten stage to something a little bit less small. Ah, uh, yeah, see, the darker that gets, the more we can accentuate that and see what's going on there with our nice highlights.
Do I need any more of my blue here? Yeah, let's do some of that. And I'm going to take some of my indigo over here. The This. Once again, we, we lost a little something here. Ah. There we that See that sometimes that's all it takes. One little touch. Uh, here there's a little too much confusion going on. So I'm going to simplify once again. And now I'm going to just hit a couple of uh, darker texture lines here on the cloak. That's it. Now what about the metals right over here? First I'll see what happens when I add some dirks to it. A little more up here too. And um, what about this? This again, it's sculpted a little bit wacky. Uh, I didn't necessarily prep these either, so I know that's one of those things where I could have uh, almost reforged it a little bit with just uh, using some files or whatever. I might even. Let's see if we can go as far as doing almost like a little bit of a pin line wash here with some of our indigo right along there. Nope, I need a little more, more of a thinner in that. And every color is different when it comes to, okay, how much thinner does it take to turn it into a pin line wash? Everyone's going to be different. I mean, some colors are already practically, <laughs> they almost start out as a pin line wash, and then there's other ones where you really got to push them into it. That would that would generally be your opaque colors. Can be uh, take a little bit more of your thinner to turn into a pin line wash. So again, that's another edge that we're just trying to tighten up here. Ah, uh, thanks, Lime. I, I mean, it would have been okay to just have that painted the regular way, but. Uh, some of these, they just needed a little extra something, right? A little something more there, and it really does. I think it helps. Uh, especially this where you have so much of the armor here, and maybe the that little bit of texture on the cloak. I don't know. It, it, it helps the armor, I think, a little bit more, too. I'm going to also darken around some of this. Let's get some darker textures on that. Because there's uh, actually a bold line that runs through here that, I mean, there's no way I could tell it was actually primed black before I got to it. So we'll just uh, see what we can do with that. And uh, I'm going to darken down around my base over here. Let's see if we can grab one of these guys. Uh, take some of our Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of the black spinel. And we'll really hit some of those darker. Before I come back the other way, not going to use that. Here, let's use this side. Maybe even a little bit of our Terra Rosa. Not much paint on that brush. And that's going to drop it a little something warmer onto this too. Not just lighter, but also changing the color just a smidge. You can really see how it's picking up. There's still pre-glaze there that it's picking up at this point. Ah, there. Uh, it's just a little something different, not all dead gray little something different grays can be many different colors they can have a greenish tint to them all kinds of stuff and uh boy wonder tm thank you so much for that follow sorry we're a little bit late on this if you're still around hello little hobbit spark my gun of course gandalf is he's been showing up here he's saying like uh 
Oh boy. This is not good. Um yeah, I hey, glad you're where you at. Ooh. That's right, she has a, a certain ring, and that's not good because uh, now it's just me versus these nine guys. Look, yeah, just me. This is bad. So thank you so much for that file. Sorry that I missed it earlier. Uh, I try to pay attention to that. It's kind of hard to uh, look at all those different things. Uh, I wish I could have my follow alerts on, but that's just not going to be the case. Okay, we're we'll just doing a little bit of tap, tap, tap there. Tone that down. I'm gonna look at my other base here to see do I need it any more. Nope, don't need to lighten up the indigo there. I don't actually have. Well, I, I do have the Hobbit book. I, I think it would say maybe which one of these guys is which, or did, I think maybe they just give them all the same profile. I'm not sure because you know guys like where's the betrayer here? Got him around here. He is. So they've given some of the night these different traits like the betrayer and the dark marshal and the, the tainted. Oh, and then of course the Shadow Lord. The Shadow Lord is interesting because he basically, well, keeps your guys from getting shot at. What? Oh, I, there was a battle report. It was uh, Markwood Rangers versus uh, some form of a mortal order with the sh uh, army with the Shadow Lord, and essentially. With the Shadow Lord, if you want to shoot at anything within six inches of him, you need to roll a natural six just to be able to hit him. And in all likelihood, whatever it is you're shooting at, you're going to need at least another six to try and kill it. And if it's in near any sort of cover at all, you're going to need to roll, I think, a four or better just to try and get a chance to roll that six again. So needless to say, there wasn't a lot of killing from those rangers, at least not those uh, first couple of turns. There's a little bit of our blue there. Ah, yeah. See, like that, uh, I think that might be a little too light just having that there. I'm going to tone this down with some of that blue here. What's going on here? I think I need to also, there's a, I need to get some of my dark back in here. I'm going to take some of that indigo here, see if this works, see what happens with this right here on that axe. Let's uh, take a blending brush here that doesn't have a whole lot of paint sitting on there, or none ideally. So yeah, the big old blob there. We are going to take the edge off of that. Ooh, that's, that's more like it. That's what we needed. 